Dominique Fishback. You play Deborah Johnson in Judas and the Black Messiah. Uh, now, Je Deborah was in a relationship with uh, Black Panther chairman Fred Hampton when he was assassinated by the FBI. She was, in fact, there when it happened. Um, was it intimidating to play this real woman uh, and these formative, uh, often traumatic experiences that she was having in this movement? Um, I don't know that it was so much intimidating for what I was going to have to portray, but it was more so the fact that she's still here with us and the legacy of the Black Panther Party. Is that I, party I've always looked up to them. I've researched them since I was a, a bit younger. And so I didn't want to do anything that would cause any more harm to the legacy. And oftentimes the Black Panther Party has been vilified throughout history. And I just wanted to make sure that I was with a team that cared enough to like get it right and try to tell the, the truth of, of what happened to Chairman Fred. And uh, you know, uh, telling, telling this story uh, you know, that's recent enough that the people are uh, like alive to see it and alive to be involved in the telling of this story. Uh, yeah, how, how, how much were like, you know, Fred Hampton's family uh, involved in the production? Yeah, so once I, once I signed on, uh, Daniel and Lakeith were already signed on and I, I signed on and we, we actually, Daniel and I, along with Shaka King, the writer and director, we went to, Sh we went to Chicago and we sat with the family for about seven hours around the table and Chairman Fred Jr. went around and said, I wanna know why every single one of you wanna do this movie. And I knew that it was for more than just, uh, they wanted to see how we would speak about them, how we would, you know, it's, a, it's such a protective legacy and um, it was important. So uh, doing that lent us um, insight. We went to the home that Chairman Fred grew up in um, and got to really understand what they were, what they had been dealing with since his assassination and before. And, and, and uh, you said you've been researching the Black Panthers for a while. Did you know this uh, story very closely before making the film or, or did you learn a lot that you didn't know already uh, throughout this process? Yeah, um, unfortunately, I mean, I, I mean, I grew up in Brooklyn and then in school, we didn't really learn about the Black Panther Party and that part of history. Um, it was really kind of kept from us. And it wasn't only until I got to college and I was a part of the Black Student Union that I heard of uh, Chairman Fred Hampton and I heard that Deborah Johnson, now Mama Akua or Akua Najiri, what she did um, while she was in the bed with him, which is cover his, his body while the bullets rained in the apartment. Um, I only kind of heard about it, but I really didn't know. And so once I got involved with the, the family, I learned about the, the politics and the ideologies of Black Panther Party including self-determination, that that was what we were, what they were looking for and the importance of that. And, and what, was, what was the most important things that you wanted to capture about, yes. about Deborah and, and her experience and, and who she was just individually? Yeah, so when, uh, when I met with Shaka King, um, he said, you know, I, I want you to, to do this character. He said, so read the script and, and let me know you, what you think. So I read the script and I gave him a whole long email about all the things that I, that I loved. And then I said, well, I have two thoughts, but I don't want to overstep. So let me know if you want to hear them. And he said, oh, you'll be playing her. You can't overstep. Give me your notes. And he called them notes. And I was like, okay. And uh, one of them was one of the first thing that Deb says to Fred in the movie is, do you like poetry? And, um, and the Panthers are and were very poetic people. And I think we miss an opportunity because we don't hear a poem. He says, I think you're right. Do you want to take a shot at that poem? And so the poem that I that she shares with Fred in the movie is a poem that I got to write. And um, on top of that, because Shaka is such a, a collaborator, um, I had this idea that, you know, since she was a writer, could she have a journal that she carried around everywhere? And so the journal in the movie is something that I really uh, did a lot for. I, I journaled as her every day. I made poems about the first time they met, the first time they kissed every single aspect of the life that even we don't get to see on camera, I, I wanted to really um, inundate myself. And it was really important to me that um, we, we can tell that she loved him so much that the sacrificial gesture that she does in the end is believable. How do we get there? Not everybody is gonna shell the person that they love body from, from bullets. And she did it while she was pregnant. So how do I get there? You know, and so I would watch Daniel and I would say, well, Chairman Fred had these, had these dimples. Does Daniel have dimples? And I would watch Daniel all the time and see how he took up space and see how that um, changed me and how I, you know, how I, how we ebbed and flowed together. So it was all about awareness and having journaled and put a lot of songs, like Nina Simone songs, there's one called Do What You Gotta Do. And that was like their theme song. She says, 
although it may mean I'll never kiss your sweet lips again, pay that no mind, go and find your, that dream of yours and come back and see me when you can. So I think that it really encompassed their relationship. Uh, and, and that poem that you mentioned uh, is such a like it, it's such an important testament to who she is and and what their relationship is. How, how long did that that poem take you to write and and like or, or did it just flow out of you because you were so in in that mind space? Well, actually, I wasn't in the mind space. I was filming. I was doing. Uh, I was filming um, Project Power for Netflix with Jamie Foxx and Joseph Gordon Levitt. Um, and I was in the hair and makeup trailer and I was like, dang, I didn't get shock of the poem yet. So I really just sat there in the hair and makeup trailer. It was like, and, and so like, uh, I really just said, okay, what is, what are the aspects, you know, Shaka wanted me to make sure that it was kind of like the war, like what, it, the, what does it mean to be a, a, a warrior, a comrade in different aspects, you know, cause we have, um, uh, Judy Harmon, who's played by Dominique Thorne and she's in the security quadrant and she has a gun and she's a revolutionary in that sense but what are the other aspects in which women have to have to put themselves and their bodies on the line in different ways and so that was really important um to me you know and the the like the like the um the fact like okay i want him to have the dimple and the twinkle in his eye but there's also like the good and the bad of bringing this child to life what does it mean to give something most precious to the world uh, and, and, you know, uh, Daniel Kaluuya's performance is so like electric when he's on, you know, uh, you know, giving speeches and, and protesting. Uh, but of course, with with Deborah, we see this much more intimate side of him. Um, and, and we also see that Deborah is very much at his level in terms of uh, her commitment and her her intellect. Uh, like, what was it like kind of going toe to toe with, with him? <laughs> creating this relationship especially when he is this such a larger than life character yeah well that brings me um to my second note that i gave shaka so i gave him two and one of them was i know it's not i know it's not a romance and i know we have a certain amount of time but i think it's very important i think with black women especially in this genre when it comes to love a lot of times where we're not uh loved or chosen until we stand behind somebody we have to continuously prove ourselves, whether we stand by them in jail or we have the baby. And I wanted to make sure that we knew that he loved her for her intellect. And were she not pregnant with a baby, he would still be with her, that he loved her beyond her physical and, and the fact that she stood by him by his side. Um, so that was really that was really, really important. And in terms of working with Daniel, I think honestly, I was just so, so um, open and ready to receive, you know, information and to learn. So when we went to Chicago and Chairman Fred Jr. asked us to everybody to say why they wanted to do this film and Daniel was sitting next to me and he went first and um, his story was so compelling, his passion, his understanding, the way he, um, uh, yeah, the way he did, the way he cared and wanted to evolve. I, I remember being galvanized by the way that he spoke. And I remember in that moment saying, oh, the way he just galvanized me, I wonder if that's how Chairman Fred galvanized other people. And if that's the case, all I have to do is be receptive to Daniel and what he brings organically and authentically, and then we'll have a rhythm. And we, we you know, we spoke a lot. Um, conf like I confided him about a bunch of things. We talked about books and and it was great. Yeah, he's a great leader. I say he was the best friend a girl could ask for. That's what I said when we wrapped. <laughs> uh, and and yeah, there's also of course so much conflict with her character dealing with his uh, uh, you know commitments. You know where he's willing to give his life to the cause. And uh, there's one scene in particular where he's giving a speech about that, and we see Deborah watching and everyone else is so like excited and, and cheering and she's very much like wait wait what does this mean for us and and it's all just happening on your face that just the emotions and what's sinking in like what's it like to kind of have that kind of reactive moment where uh you're sort of uh showing us who this woman is in, in a very internal way where, where where it's just on her face like that yeah uh, well, you know, um, I didn't go to high school for performing arts, but I thought it was really important to learn the, the craft of acting. So I went to school and I studied theater. And a lot of times we talked about breaking the scenes down and how and starting one place and ending somewhere else, just in terms of, of actor work, of character development. And so I look at the scenes and I say, 
well, what is the subtext? You know, what is the world in which she's living in? Yes, she believes in everything he's saying, but she's still only human and she's only 19 years old. You know what I mean? What what does it mean to to know that you love somebody that you're bringing a child into the world and that he's absolutely right? You know, and, and it reminded me, I was reading a lot of um, Links and Hughes poems and I have to look up the title for this particular one, but it, this one was about dreams and and it came to it came to me, I journaled as Deb and it said, well, what if, what if Chairman Fred is the dream or he's my dream? And sometimes when we have dreams that are so big, we don't wanna let them go. We don't wanna give them to people for fear that they will misuse them or they, they won't know how to treat them. You know, but at the end of the day, if we hold back and keep our dreams inside, we don't service anybody. We don't service the world. We don't service ourselves. And we, we kind of dishonor the dream. And so in that sense, she had to say, okay, if he's the dream, if he's my dream, if he's the dream of the people, then I have to relinquish him. I have to be willing to let that go because it's bigger than me. Um, and that's kind of what was happening. And, and as you mentioned, uh, Deborah was, was 19 at the time. Uh, 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 Fred Hampton was killed when he was just 21. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it always strikes me when I'm thinking about this story, how young these characters were and how committed and how knowledgeable and how thoughtful and how much they were already leaders at such a young age. Yes. Uh, like, what, what, were, what are your thoughts about characters who have this within them uh, when they're teenagers or, or just barely out of their teenage years yeah you know I, I it's something that I talk about a lot because um when when I when I look back at the the 60s and and even like the early 90s and stuff when I because like I was a huge fan of Selena and Aaliyah and when I think that they were only 22 and 23 years old when they when they died it's like they they had such maturity you know, such femininity, such like, and, and then when I, so when I look back at the 60s and I see that Chairman was only 21 years old, but he was a man. It, it was like he had lived many lifetimes already, but sometimes, especially as, as black and brown people, we get the burden of, of our ancestors. We get the burden of a history that didn't, that doesn't, that didn't treat us well or didn't see the value in us. And so we're carrying those things along as we go. And it's up to us to reimagine to, to break social constructs, to, to find out our true selves. And that's why I'm like, meditation, meditate and know yourself. And I think in that sense, we'll, we'll um, evolve in the, in the speed that they kind of did, I guess. Uh, and of course it all builds to uh, the scene where, where the FBI raids uh, the apartment and, and kills Fred. And like, I, I can imagine having played these characters and having learned about their lives that this that must have been an especially tense scene to shoot and, and uh you know technical also there's a lot uh, happening in that scene uh what was what was that process like and and you know did, was that something that you kind of needed to prepare for uh, uh a lot more intensively um no i think well we actually shot we actually shot the assassination scene on the 50th anniversary of chairman fred being assassinated it's just kind of how it fell. And so the energy around that day and uh, around the studio and that replica apartment was was very high. It was somber and it was it, it, it was very deep. And even the night before I realized, cause I went into it wanting to like really give myself, I prayed to be a vessel to give myself to the to the spirit of this, these characters and the, and the stories that I'm representing. And so by the end that night before, my stomach was in knots, my heart was beating so fast and I was like, what's going on? And I kept telling myself, no, Daniel's gonna be okay. We're just, we're just doing a movie. But my body couldn't differentiate between what was real and what wasn't. And so I realized that, you know, I asked to be able to hold that kind of love. And so by, by the end of, of filming, it was there. And I had to ultimately that night cry in the hotel room and mourn the love and the loss. And I got the opportunity to speak to Mama Okuo, formerly known as Deborah Johnson yesterday. And she said, seeing Daniel and I made her miss that, that love. And so that was very um, touching for me because we really did like, we really just wanted to do the family justice and the story justice, you know? Um, and that day I got to set and I was, I was really quiet. Every, everything was really just, just slow and, um, I couldn't even, I can't even, I don't even have the words to, to express what that day was like. I mean, in terms of preparation, 
I, I listened to Do What You Gotta Do, that Nina Simone song, um, in between while they're adjusting hair and makeup because all those things are still happening, but we are in the mindset. But it did, we had given so much to each other and as, on and off screen at the time that it didn't, I didn't take much thinking about. We felt the responsibility and we felt the loss of, of Chairman Fred. Uh, and and th this story uh, is so like relevant in terms of contextualizing where we currently are with uh, Black Lives Matter and and you know the relationship between Black people in this country and law enforcement, um, you know. But we shot this, of course, before the events of 2020. Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. Like, could you have imagined kind of where the culture would be at? Like that this film would fit like so importantly into discussions and, and uh, situations that we're already living through? Like, yeah, well, that's the, that's the kind of, like that's what's unfortunate about this country. Like, you know, it's not, it hasn't changed. You know, um, Eric Garner was a part of my family. You know, Erica Garner was my cousin and she became an activist after the murder of her father. And she died at 27 of a heart attack. So it's not, it's not new to me. It's not new to so many other Black people. And so I guess the difference of 2020 was how much other people who didn't come from the same walks of life came to rally together. And it reminded me of what Chairman Fred was trying to do with the Rainbow Coalition. You know, at 21 years old, he had a vision that if all people under the same oppressive government came together, we could make a difference. And he, you know, he got the the gang members, he got the white, the Spanish, every like Hispanic, Latino um, people together with, with black people and the Black Panther Party. And he had a vision and they took him before it was able to come to fruition. So in 2020, when the marches were going on and it was happening all across the wor world, I just thought, wow, this is what Chairman Fred was thinking. And also people were open, more receptive. And I think Maybe if this had come out during the heart of of the the protest, I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't have been as you know as people wouldn't have been so ready for it. And I think now we've built up. People are starting to face the truth of this country and the injustices that Black and Brown people face. And so maybe people are just open now, open and ready to to hear truths that was buried for so long. You know, Chairman Fred's death is the is kind of like. Is, is the only, I don't know if it's the only one, but it was one of the only ones that was proven for sure that the FBI and the Chicago police planned this out and they intentionally murdered this this young man while he was while he laid defenseless in his bed sleeping. So like that that's the difference. There's so many speculations about who killed such and such, who killed this person, but with, with Chairman Fred is proven in the in the court of law and still the justice wasn't really served. Well, I want to congratulate you uh, on this film and this performance um, and, uh, you know, looking forward to more people seeing the film and getting to discuss it. And uh, thank you so much for talking with me today. It's thank been a pleasure. You. Thank you for taking the time. I appreciate you. Thank you.